Welcome back to the Malty Man Cave. I'm Keith. I'm Dave. And tonight we're going to be doing a bottle from Speyside, courtesy of Santa Cruzan. Coming up. All right, so we're back. And as I said, um, Santa Cruzan is an amazing friend of ours, um, you know, Patreon of our channel. And he, I don't want to really get into how generous he's been to us, but mm -hmm. he sent, a couple, sent us a couple of bottles, mm -hmm. and this is one of the beauties that he sent to us. So He's, He sent Keith. You sent Keith those, those bottles. You, if you need my address... <laughs> It's 2295 Ashbrook Trail <laughs> Oh, scratch that. <laughs> but this is one of the beauties that he sent us. Glenn Fark was 17. Um, comes in at 43% ABV. Um, it's non-colored, but I do believe it's a little chill filtered. Um, we've done a couple Glenn Fark Yeah. Um, Glenn Fark was these? Yeah. Glenn Fark was Clark was these? Clark. Do you remember doing the Glenn Fark was 10? Oh, man, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Something that I've always, in my opinion, I've heard other people say is Glenn Farkless is known for this, like, grassy, like, cough syrupy kind of note. If I would get any hint of what we would be doing that night, this night, I would go back and watch whatever I have done in the past. <laughs> yeah. That way I know. <laughs> <laughs> These nights down here, they blend together. Tonight is a sad night for me and Dave. We watched the Cavs get swept. And obviously we're diehard Cavs fans. Yeah, just, it was just sad. It was sad seeing LeBron last last time as a Cav. Yeah. And a blowout. Yeah. And being swept. Dude, he averaged like a double-double though. I don't... I don't or I mean, a triple-double. I, I don't blame... I mean, he's getting like double-teamed and hacked and, and everything's gear to stop him but how did he go from 55 points and literally making everything so he kind of looks scared to shoot from outside didn't he i feel like game um, one, game two or three lost his outside it's like shot. he missed a couple and then he just completely abandoned it i feel he like was... he thought i feel like he uh he's smart enough to realize the margin of error is so slim that he, yeah. yeah that he can't afford those shots but don't you think that he he kind of abandoned a little too much, I feel like. It's one thing, like, each game, you start, you miss, like, two, three, four, five. Like, all right, I'm going to start yeah. taking it the hole. Yeah. But I feel like he had an off game, game two, and then he just stopped shooting for the whole series from outside. <sighs> so, Glenn Farkless is a Space Side Distillery. Um, I think it was founded in 1836. Um, it is now family owned. I think um, William, is it William Grant? I think it's William Grant. Um, purchased it. I can't remember the gentleman that he purchased off of, but ever since then, it's been owned by the Grant family. So it's pretty cool. That's they great. do things the right way. Yeah. They um, direct fire their stills, which Springbank does well. And I just think it gives it, I don't even know how to describe what it does, but it just does something special to the whiskey. Yeah. And they're kind of known for picking out good quality cask. And ironically, not first fill. They're kind of do a lot of second fill and third fill sherry mm. cask. So the sherry bomb, the sherry is not as strong unless you're getting the, the Glenn Farkless 105. Yeah. Or a couple other expressions. Do do they generally always come in a uh, a, a darkened bottle? I, I think that this not always. I've seen I, bottles that are not okay because I I feel like I've seen so many Glen Farkless in a uh, similar tinted bottle. Yeah. I, I think for a while now most of their expressions are in the yeah the brown bottles. I yeah. think in the UK or in Europe some, sometimes they get clear. Which bottles. is cool because I mean even if they did leave it pretty clear, that's pretty good. Pretty yeah. good color to it. Yeah. For, for Which what normally I get kind of cynical when I see a dark bottom. Like, what, like are they, what are they trying to hide? Yeah. Yeah. All do right. You, just one more question. Do you do you think it has any uh, any um, uh, impact on the on the flavor? The bottle. Yeah. The color. The coloring. Do you feel like the UV light on a clear bottle would be? No, you mean the the E one fifty A? Yeah. Like that when like. When they have like a light whiskey and they add the coloring to make it look no, darker. No, 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 I'm talking Just about actually bottling and, bottling and like storing. And, I don't and think it has any effect on the flavor unless you put this bottle and a clear bottle in like direct sunlight. Yeah, for, but you would never do that. Well, yeah, right, right. Unless you were. Unless there was someone you didn't know. An accident. You yeah. didn't know. But yeah. then I actually, I do think it probably would help to be in the brown bottle. Yeah. And it could like save, you know, some of the flavor. So whiskey can be damaged by yeah. UV just yep. like. 
Another thing, and I actually made a mistake the other day. If you have a huge whiskey collection, I would not have like, um, don't spray cologne, don't have like air fresheners, because even though it seems like minute, it'll small little amounts can always creep in there over time, and it can. I mean, if you're spending that much money, you could ruin it. I wondered why it smelled like it does down here <laughs> for so long. I was like, just bo, just <laughs> no, de like dead, dead bodies. <laughs> are there, are there dead bodies? Have you had other co-hosts before? <laughs> My wife. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a couple of days. Just Dave. <laughs> All right, what do you get on the nose? Maybe you're not the killer. Maybe it's me. <laughs> things are things are gonna get weird tonight in our sorrow. It's after, after midnight. The, the cat, it's twelve. The calves, the calves it's midnight. Lost. The Cavs lost. We got uh, in a debate about something before we were oh! there. <laughs> it's always good when we get get angry <laughs> with each other. I still love you. Yeah. Cheers to that. What do you get on the nose? Oh man. Right off the bat. Dried prunes. I just had them today. It's in my nose. Um, I then I wrote Italian dressing. I can't explain why. Um, I was gonna write Olive Garden, like a like a dressing of some sort. Yeah. I couldn't quite. Um, and I, then, I I can kind of tell what you're. you're do saying. you know what I'm trying yeah. to bark? What I'm barking at? Um, and then, like a vinaigrette without with a, not as much vinegar. Uh, yeah. 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 I, well, initially I said, oh, here comes raisin wine vinegar. Um, have you ever, you get crucified have you ever gone you camping and, and brought ivory soap to, uh, yeah, there is a soapy taste to this too. Yeah. At least uh, not a taste, but a scent, yeah. a scent right on the nose, ivory soap. And then I wrote walking through a pine forest. Yeah. Just a uh, fresh, clean man. Like you're getting out of a shower <laughs> into a forest of pine. <laughs> Which I live all around pine and carpenter ants, they live in pine trees. They get in your house really bad. Uh, they don't get in my house, they eat my house. Seriously? Yeah, carpenter ants. Wow. You see that's, that's thing. Yeah. Ah. Bro. Diatomaceous earth, if that's what you were asking. That's yeah. what you spread. Thanks. <laughs> Diet your what? Diet, diatomaceous or di, diatomaceous or diatomaceous? Yeah. Ah, Google, Google will fix it for you if you if you type that in. We actually do have quite a few hints around here. Yeah. My wife like just spread some brain. of that, man. It's so fine, and or it's like it's on like the outside, the, just around just, the perimeter. Yeah, house. the ants like literally walk through it, and it like tears them up. <laughs> oh, is that what they do for bed bugs too? Mm -hmm. That powder. Yeah. You put down. Yep. So. <laughs> Things are getting real weird in the Malton Man Cave. All right, let's go. So on the nose, I get butterscotch. And a lot of times people say this, and I think I said this in the, the Glen Farkless 10 or the Glen Farkless 105. Everyone who says butterscotch or toffee or caramel, I don't get butterscotch in very many scotches. But this is one of the few scotches I actually do actually smell and taste butterscotch. Then I put sugar rock candy. I don't know what it is. Like, you know, they come in those like old mom and pop like jars, like just like the ones with like the little stick, the sugar rock candies. If you like candy rock, milk. put your nose in it, like it truly smells like sugar rock candy. Then I put mild cinnamon, mm. nutmeg, a little molasses. Dude, you're right on when uh, going down to uh, like Tennessee, those shops that yep. touristy. Mm. Floral, cherries, a little sawdust, light oak, sweet tea, and put pine. Mmm, pine. I like to drink in. Smell the champagne. Mm. Then a little light earthiness and malty barley sugar and a little bit of that, that cough syrup note that I was talking about earlier. What do you got on the palate? Oh, for being a sherry. She's pretty good to me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it's because it's probably second and third and maybe even fourth fill. It's yeah. not quite as it's, intense. Yeah, you know what? It's that it's and you probably get more exactly of the vanillins yeah. from the oak because they're more worn out casks, so you get more of the <laughs> bourbon stuff. Well, seriously. Yeah. Glenn Farkless, worn well, out casks. No, I mean they use good quality casks. And sometimes if you're gonna put your if you're gonna age a whiskey for a long time, like yeah. 
you know, 17, it's a decent amount of years. If you put first fill, all first fill oh, cast, it'd be so it's going to be so rich and flavorful, it's almost like too much. Yeah. Um, I love like robust flavor, like the Abuna, the Purpose like, yeah, 105, but so. You like it. <laughs> busty. Um, speaking of busty, buttered cinnamon raisin bread, mm. right out of the toaster man, putting some yeah. some good salty butter on it. Um, Capri Sun. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. Probably the uh, the fruit, the fruits that are coming through for me. I do get on the finish kind of a little I, bit. You, you you're feel like it? spot on with these notes tonight, man. Um, and then I put orange soda. Totally. Same same kind of. Um, same kind of rhythm of that is an orange soda type. Um, ivory soap again, just that soapy, clean something. And then I too saw butterscotch candy on your notes <laughs> and I wrote it on mine to give me a... <laughs> what do you keep pointing to? <laughs> Our notes over there? Yeah. We don't have notes, Dave. Well, we, we don't have a notes board. We, so... We have earpieces. Yeah. Lindsay's upstairs. <laughs> Butterscotch. <laughs> <laughs> so I get on the palate. You done with your palate notes? Yeah, man. Butterscotch. Kind of a buttery croissant. This is a really random note, but chocolate, fizzy bottle cap candies. Mm. Chocolate. Yeah. The you like they come on the strip and mm -hmm. chocolate, um, sweet hay, and Werther's original mm. with a little bit of that cough drop. Like it's like if you put cough syrup in Werther's original and like made it Werther's original. A soup? Yeah. <laughs> what are you cooking? <laughs> Don't ask. Ginger, cinnamon, bitter orange peel. And then lastly, it's like this Starbucks mocha frappuccino mm -hmm. note. Kind of, it's almost even more like in the finish. Mocha frappuccinos. <laughs> what well, do you get on the finish? Uh, man, exactly what you said. Capri Sun, just that, man, it's like a fruit cocktail right on your, your tongue. Nice shirt, by the way. Speaking of fruit cocktails, <laughs> the fruitiest. This of started cocktails. our debate. <laughs> the fruitiest, was... <laughs> fruitiest of cocktails, right here. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Is that so, the question of the night today? <laughs> no. Fruit cocktails, um, Capri Sun. Um, once again, that clean, very uh, pine foresty. Yeah. Just walking on some needles. Pine needles. So for me, it's, you know, if this was at 46% and ancho filtered, there probably would be a better finish. It's kind of a quick. Yeah. I mean, it's not really quick, but it's kind of a quick finish. Um, it is pleasant. You it's, know, you, yeah, it's you memorable. Kind of like syrupy, Werther's Original, the butterscotch, a little bit of like the cough drops, sweet hay, mm -hmm. and like a little bit of like the bitter orange peel. And then it just kind of goes away pretty quick. Yeah. You know what? That might be why I said orange soda is that kind of mm -hmm. medicinal. Uh, yeah. Artificial flavor sort of sort of taste to it. Almost like root beerish. Yeah. Almost with orange because you get the sherry influence. Mm. Hmm. All right, man. Macho Man came Mark. What are you gonna give us? Uh, I'm gonna say it. it, it Probably because of what you said, that it, it is pretty light on the sherry. I got to experience the sherry, plus a lot of the things that I feel like you enjoy on more sherried. But for me, it's just, just, ah, oh, there's there's that raisin. Red red fruits and chocolate is just so gross. Ugh, I hate was... chocolate and, red, and fruits. Ah. It's just terrible. Anyways. So what are you going to give it? I'm gonna give it an 88. 88? Yeah. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I'm gonna give this. Am I higher than you? Yeah. Yeah. An 86, 
If it was 46% or higher and not show filtered, I bet you it would be an 88, 89. I really like this bottle. Yeah. And Santa, St. Chris, we really appreciate you giving us this bottle. I feel I really like this like is my Parkless. favorite, Club one Club. of my favorite cherry. Really? Like, yeah. Because yeah. I can get so much more out of it. I think you really like it because it's more second and third fill sherry cask and it's a lower ABV. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if it was higher ABV, like I said, this would probably be an 88, 89. It's a really, really good whiskey. Um, this would probably be, well, I was going to say good for a beginner, but not really because it's got that kind of grassy cough syrup, you know. That, I don't know. I, you think that a newbie would like this? I feel like it would be a good, it would be a good place to get your feet wet. As far as if you're really? if you're thinking about getting serious, I feel like yeah, the cough here. syrup hay notes aren't as strong as this. But, it is, but they're the younger um, Glenfarkas. But they're familiar. Yeah, I would put it that way. It's it's a more familiar palette. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Capri Suns Ivory Soap. It's uh, yeah. This definitely got a lot better um, with some oxidization. A little bit of yeah question of the night so mm -hmm. as as we sit here drinking and sulking from our, ah. the calves the calves sweep we had a couple i think dave wanted to make this a dual part so my initial question is where should lebron go now obviously we'd love for lebron to stay in cleveland this is you know i was really kind of upset with him when he left it was the way he did it last time i understand if he really wants to chase championships right now with what he's got to leave <laughs> unless yeah. they can figure out some miracle to get some key players like the Warriors are just too good. And it, they cheated, which you guys, we already talked about in the last thing. They got off and lucky on a technicality. But they're together, and it's not going away anytime soon. So the, the league's got to figure out a way to beat them. So yeah. Yeah. Where, where do you think would be the best place for him to go? And then you wanted to ask a little bit about okay. should, how, sh we, what were you yeah. saying? Oh, well, we can if we can do this. Do, do it in two parts. All right. All right, just so I can stay focused on one. So I think he should go to either, I think Houston, if he really wants to win like next year, yeah. Houston's probably the number one spot. If he wants, if he's going to stick around, if he thinks he's got three or four years, five years, mm -hmm. which I don't know, might be pushing it. Although he was so amazing in this playoffs. Yeah. Um, Philly, you know, with Joel and Embiid, Ben Simmons, you know, JJ Redick, which I think we both really like him, right? Yeah. If, if he goes there, they need to make sure Redick stays. He needs some of those three point snipers. I beyond that with JJ, I feel like he's just a good presence, a good. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, good he's been guy, in the league for leader. like what twelve years. Yeah. So if not Love one of those two players, and I know a lot of people are talking about LA. I mean, yes, if Paul George goes there, it's a decent, and they, they yeah. can be competitive very quickly. Um, but the the third one, I would say, is San Antonio. I think he could have, for the first time in his career, have a chance to have a great coach. Yeah. He's never had that, in my opinion. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think. You know, any of the coaches he had there, some of them were good, but they weren't great. Yeah. And then if Kyle, you know, Kyle Leonard comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard. I have two, uh, I have two theories. <clears throat> Actually three. I've got three, too. Three landing spots. My first one is the one that I told you tonight when we first proposed the question. Uh, I think LeBron is going to go to the Lakers. Um, and he's going to be showtime. And I have heard that. He's yeah. going to be showtime there. And uh, five years from now, uh, easy, more easily transition to a media, media empire yeah. uh, sort of thing. He's already got TV shows that film out there. Yeah. That, seriously. You That's why. That was my thing is he's already doing that. He's already. Without, so, yeah. Like, yeah. But he's traveling out there all off season. And when, I mean, I'm, who wouldn't want to live in L.A.? So that uh, rough 45 minute. Yeah. Jeff uh -huh. Light. Um, so L.A. would be my first thing. Uh, not my first. These are all pretty equal in my mind. Um, the second thing, <laughs> maybe not equal. Dude, I think he might go to Boston. <laughs> I've heard that. Somebody said that. I think he might go if to Boston. If you were Kyrie, you'd be like, frick. No, I thought and I escaped. Kyrie. And they I thought Kyrie I escaped this guy. Because he would be a perfect fit for who they have now. Um, as far as uh, he fits the mold, that what they want, they want six eight all all across the board, so they can switch everything for Brad Stevens' defense. Do they really do that? Is that part of his defense? I mean, like, that's, I mean, it looks he, like he he's the one that started. Taller. He's the one that that seemed to have started the trend of 
have them all pretty much so the same player so that, that you can switch everything. And then Kerr started, and then D'Antoni started. Super Kyrie. Yeah. What about, is Hayward going to be able to come back? Is, I think so. Is anybody checked on his, like, is he, like, making progress he, well, with his injury? Man, we're getting so far behind. Anyways, yeah, he's getting close. Um, I think he got set back. He was pushing it too hard. Yeah. But he's close. Man, they're going to be. So, anyways, LeBron to Boston. LeBron to Boston. They boot Hot Kyrie. Hot take. Kyrie's Hot in, take. Kyrie's injury is bigger than it's It's going to, he's not going to be full full Kyrie from now on, I think. Really? No. Are people saying that? No, no, that's no. That's your no. opinion? I, th I think that's, I think he might have a lingering issue um, with his, with his body. And his whole thing of being good is because he's Quick. Yeah, so if and, his knees or whatever. Is yeah, up. and the way he lands and gets hit constantly, yeah. like he's always taking. Um, yeah, I mean that's part of being a ball handler. Look at him. Steph Curry gets. I know he fit. He pushes it a lot, but I mean you saw Kyle Korver just <laughs> <laughs> just pushing him to the ground. Yeah. Um. So Boston, and then my third. I also saw him flop about ten times. My third <laughs> is, and we start it tonight, a petition. For the Cleveland Cavaliers ownership group to sell a majority stake to LeBron James Enterprises. LeBron becomes owner That's, slash player. We're, we're delirious, LeBron. <laughs> you really do think it. that? Has do there, it. Has there been murmurs or rumblings? Even if they did, and I would love for LeBron to stay. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have the cap space to bring anybody. But, but we would still so have we would LeBron. Just, but and tomorrow, LeBron would but next build. year... We get swept again. But but LeBron would be a part of the organization forever. Yeah. And that's and that's what Cleveland needs is a better represent like so, somebody. He's chasing the ghost, man. Oh, dude. After this, he's he's got some serious PR to do for his legacy. He's got Kobe on his left and Michael on his right, and they're all walking together. <laughs> yeah. Mike Mike was the nineties, Kobe the two thousands. Alright, so who do you really think? So you think Los Angeles is Percentage, um, like, probably you know ones. what I think. I think it 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 all looks pretty good in the West. Um, uh, yeah, probably LA. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, Santa Cruzin. Thank you so much again. You are amazing. You're a gentleman and a scholar. So generous. We appreciate yeah. it. Um, thanks as always for watching.